The following video addresses the inspection and repair of the Ames 4000 SS and 5000 SS backflow prevention assemblies, sizes 8 through 10 inch. Before beginning any work, familiarize yourself with these procedures to avoid harming yourself or damaging the assembly. A copy of the following procedures, as well as specification sheets, repair kit ordering information, and additional product resources can be found online at AmesFirewater.com. To inspect your backflow assembly, you'll need a socket wrench, a 3 8 inch nut driver, a crescent wrench, two all-thread rods, four nuts, two hex head bolts, and an FDA-approved lubricant. To begin your inspection, shut down the water supply by slowly closing both the outlet and inlet shutoff valves. Relieve any air or water pressure trapped within the system by slowly opening the number 2, number 3, and number 4 test cocks. With a wrench, disconnect the two bolts connecting the groove coupler. With both pieces of the coupler safely set aside, remove the rubber gasket and lid to access the number 1 and number 2 cam check assemblies. Inside the assembly, you'll observe two checks differentiated as the number 1 and number 2, respectively. The number 1 check, which should always be removed first, can be disconnected by unscrewing the four nuts holding it into place. Once the nuts have been removed, wiggle the check free and carefully lift it through the valve opening. Collect all loose nuts and washers and safely set them aside. Remove the number 2 check by unscrewing the four bolts connecting it to the valve body. In doing so, be careful not to unscrew the two bolts linking the centerline access bar to the check. With the bolts disconnected, rotate the check as shown using the centerline access bar to position it for removal. With the unit correctly positioned, carefully lift it through the access port. Collect any loose bolts or washers and set them aside. To remove the relief valve, first disconnect the sensing line from the valve body with a wrench. Place a screwdriver across the edges of two of the hex head screws in the bottom flange cover and turn counterclockwise to loosen the relief valve. Never place a pipe wrench around the body of the valve. Doing so could seriously damage it. To access the seat and clap a rubber ring of the number one check, start by placing the check on a flat surface with the coil spring facing up. To access the seat and ring, the spring that surrounds the clapper shaft must be compressed. To do so, place all thread rods through the two holes in the spring retaining plate. Thread the rods into the hole at the base of the spider, tightening with the help of two nuts threaded onto the rod. To compress the spring, first loosen the top nut and back it off without unthreading the rod from the spider. Using a crescent wrench, tighten the nut closest to the spring retaining plate. Be sure to tighten both nuts evenly to ensure a safe, level compression of the spring. During compression, the clapper will slowly move up away from the seat. Compress the spring until the clapper has moved approximately one inch from the seat, allowing you to clean and inspect the seat for damage or debris. With the inspection complete, slowly back the nuts off to release the compression and unthread the rods. To open the number two check, you'll first need to release the tension holding the clapper shut. Locate the two cam arm torsion springs. With a 3 8 inch nut driver placed over the torsion spring, move the spring away and around the retaining bracket to release the tension. Do the same with the second spring and the cam arm will open with no tension. Clean the check with water to remove any dirt or debris. Thoroughly dry the unit before proceeding with the inspection. Oftentimes, damage or deeply embedded debris may be invisible to the naked eye and can only be detected by close examination and touch. Inspect the check body, the clapper, the seating area, the rubber sealing disc, O-ring, and any additional check components for dirt, deeply embedded debris, or nicks and cuts. Replace if necessary. 
For closer examination of the disc, the disc retainer can be removed by placing two bolts opposite one another and loosening the retainer with a large screwdriver placed between them. If one side of the disc has been cut, it can be removed and reinstalled in reverse in lieu of ordering a replacement. If both sides are damaged, it should be replaced. Rethread the retainer plate and tighten. With the check cleaned and repaired, replace the torsion springs. Prepare the checks for reinstallation by cleaning the O-ring groove and thoroughly lubricating the O-ring with an FDA-approved lubricant. Lubricant should help to keep the O-ring in place during reinstallation. To disassemble the relief valve for inspection and repair, first unthread the four bolts connecting the cover to the flanged end of the relief valve with a 5 16 inch wrench. With the cover set aside, remove the piston assembly and sleeve from the valve body as shown. Slide the sleeve off of the diaphragm and finish disassembling the unit by unscrewing the hex bolt connecting the rubber diaphragm and piston assembly. Begin by inspecting the diaphragm for any debris, tears, holes, or excessive wrinkles. If the diaphragm is damaged in any way, a new piston diaphragm assembly should be installed. Thoroughly clean and inspect all surfaces within the relief valve body. Should you discover any nicks or damage around the seat surface, the body should be replaced. Finish by inspecting the components of the piston assembly and the sleeve for any significant damage or debris. Clean and replace as necessary. To reassemble the relief valve, start by rebuilding the piston diaphragm assembly as shown. With the unit rebuilt, replace the sleeve with the ribbed edge facing upwards. While still grasping the sleeve, fold the top of the diaphragm over the ribbed edge to hold it into place. To properly refold the diaphragm, cup your hand slightly and force the sleeve down over the piston assembly with a rapid slap as demonstrated. If done correctly, the trapped air in the diaphragm will force the rubber between the inside of the sleeve and the outside of the piston. If the assembly is wrinkled, repeat the previous procedure. Reinstall the assembly in the relief valve body with the hex head bolt entering the flanged end first. With the unit properly seated, reinstall the cover plate and tighten the four bolts evenly to ensure a firm seal. Begin rebuilding the assembly by reinstalling the number two check as shown. The number two check should always be replaced first, followed by the number one. With the check in place, evenly re-thread the bolts, being careful not to over-tighten. If the O-ring should happen to become dislodged during reinstallation, remove the check from the assembly and refit it into the O-ring groove. Reinstall the number one check as shown with the spring entering the valve first. Re-thread the nuts evenly to ensure a firm, tight seal. Place the rubber gasket around the valve access port. Reinstall the lid and carefully move the gasket into place, flush with the edge of the lid. The coupler should be reinstalled around the gasket and lid, tightening the bolts evenly with a socket wrench until the coupler makes even pad-to-pad -pad contact. With the gasket reinstalled, re-thread the relief valve hand tight. Reconnect the sensing line with a wrench to finish reassembling the unit. Restart the system by slowly opening the inlet shutoff valve, closing the number two, number three, and number four test cocks, and opening the outlet. For more information on local startup and testing procedures, consult your local municipality or manufacturer's representative.